Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is home to over 100 different stages from a ton of different franchises. In order for each stage to represent their respective location better, most of them were given hazards or specific elements that help them stand out. Smash Ultimate in particular provided a toggle in the menu for these hazards, which means we can directly identify what these hazards are based on the changes the Switch causes. With so many hazards though, they can range wildly in quality, so today we're going to be ranking every stage hazard in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now I'm not going to be ranking each and every hazard individually, as that'd be a bit absurd, instead we'll be ranking ranking every hazard on a given stage all at once. But what exactly will these be ranked by? Well, when I play Smash, I'm much more of a competitive player, so I prefer simple stages. One thing that I hate most about some of these hazards is that they get in the way of a fight way too much. So less intrusive and more creative stage hazards will get the edge. The easiest way I think I can put the way I'm judging these is, do I prefer playing on the stage with or without hazards? Now based on what I said before about me being a competitive player, you may think that it would always be preferred for me to not have hazards on, however, if I'm already playing on a wacky stage, sometimes if the hazard is good, I might prefer playing on it like that. I'll also separate this video into tiers. Really bad hazards, hazards that still make the stage worse, hazards that don't really affect my opinion on the stage, hazards that make the stage better, and a few placed into a top tier. But now that you know how I'm going to be ranking them, I think I should also mention that there are 14 stages that do not change with the hazards toggle, and thus they will be excluded from the rank. Ranking. Those stages are Battlefield, Big Battlefield, Small Battlefield, Final Destination, Temple, Delfino Plaza, Dreamland GB, Prism Tower, Mario Galaxy, Suzaku Castle, Moray Towers, King of Fighters Stadium, Northern Cave, and Mishima Dojo. That leaves us with 101 stages to rank today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. At 100k, I'll rank every moon in Mario Odyssey. But anyways, let's jump right into ranking all 101 stage hazards in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. At number 101, we have the face of the hazards toggle itself being Wily Castle. In the main options menu, the Yellow Devil, which is the main hazard for this stage, is the one used to show off the difference. If you were around during the Smash 4 days, people complained a lot about this guy in particular as he appeared way too often, which is probably why they ended up using him as the face of this hazards toggle. He essentially acts as a boss, so whenever he appears, which is a lot by the way, you and your opponents have to basically shift your focus to attacking him for a while. Whoever lands the last hit will also get a massive explosion to help KO the other opponents. This guy is just far too obnoxious for a normal battle to occur with him present. He interrupts the flow of gameplay, which is why he is easily the worst stage hazard in Ultimate. Oh, there's also these platforms that appear sometimes, but who cares. Number 100, Garplane. For a very similar reason to Wily Castle, this is also pretty low. Instead of the Yellow Devil though, Metal Face comes to ruin the stage. He only comes at night, and I do find him to be a bit easier to defeat. He does destroy the stage though, which is quite annoying, but also Garplane is not the best stage layout wise anyways, so it doesn't really matter that much. Either way, it's still an improvement over the Yellow Devil. Oh yeah, and there are also these springs, but again, who cares? Number 99, Rainbow Cruise. We finally leave the boss stages and we enter into our first Mario stage of the video. Without hazards on, you spend the entire time fighting on the main ship here, which is a decent layout. With hazards on, however, the stage moves away from the ship after a while and auto-scrolls through a mess of random elements from Rainbow Ride from Mario 64. The layout is incredibly obnoxious to fight on like this, as you have to move through several different moving objects. But Rainbow Ride is also pretty annoying to move on, so hey, great job adapting this Smash Team. But yeah, auto-scrolling stages and fighting absolutely do not mix well, which is what put this so low. Number 98, Magicant. While most of the hazards like the UFO, Sprout, and so on aren't too bad, one guy brings this whole stage down, that being the Flying Man. During a fight, he'll spawn on the right side of the stage, and the player to touch him first will get them on their team. His attacks are incredibly strong, and while he can be KO'd, he's still fairly annoying to deal with. He's better from the other bosses from earlier since he easily has the most controllable gimmick, but he still makes the stage significantly less fun to play on, especially if you're a slow character who's never going to get him. That's going to be the end of our bottom tier. It's really short compared to the others, but the next few, while still being worse than their Hazards Off version in my opinion, are a lot more playable. Number 97, Green Greens. Without hazards, the layout here is actually not too bad. The main platform has a good, though not really unique layout, but the two side platforms make this a lot of fun to play on. With hazards on though, these gaps between platforms get filled with endless breakable blocks and Wispy Woods will aggressively blow wind as well. These all get in the way of what I would say is a pretty solid layout all things considered. As you can tell, this is still definitely a step up from the previous four in terms of the hazards not being too obnoxious, but I still think they get in the way enough to make this a significant downgrade. Number 96, Tomodachi Light. The only thing that changes on this stage are that the walls in front of the building will only disappear when the player is inside of them. This is genuinely really annoying, and I don't know how any sane individual can enjoy playing on this stage with the walls flashing in and out. Hazards Off fixed this by having the walls be permanently see-through, which is just so much better. Since it technically doesn't affect gameplay, I moved it up above the last five, but I certainly wouldn't blame anyone if they said that this is the worst hazard in the game. Number 95, Spiral Mountain. 
This is our first ultimate DLC stage, and I can understand if people put this one higher. Basically, with hazards on, the stage will spin you while you fight. I talked about this a bit in my DLC ranking video, but I always just get motion sickness playing on here. It doesn't help that sometimes it can be really hard to tell where you can actually stand. I much prefer playing this one without hazards. I know this whole list is just my opinion, I mean seriously that's the point of a list video, but take this one especially with a grain of salt. Number 94, Spear Pillar. With hazards on, several Pokemon are able to spawn in to affect the stage in some way. Sometimes it's simply by damaging it, however other times they can do things that cause the whole battle to slow down which is just annoying. The hazardless version of the stage is much more reasonable to play on. The layout is solid enough which means that the hazards really hurt it here. It's better than the last few though as their attacks are fairly easy to avoid, but it's stuff like slowing down time for everyone that really gets on my nerves. Now we've reached a bit of a streak of stages that have a similar gimmick, that being they transform. Basically with hazards off, the stage will stay in one location for the entire duration. However with hazards on, they'll either change into a new layout or travel to a new location during the fight. Generally, I like fighting in one specific spot the entire time as transformations can get in the way of battle. So let's rapid fire through a bunch of these here. Number 93, Garrick Mach Monastery. This is the worst of the bunch since every transformation is a walk off for some reason, meaning there's barely any reason for this to even transform. Number 92, Kalos Pokemon League. This is our first tournament legal stage of the video. Obviously tournaments play with hazards off, which is why we don't have to deal with the transformations here. Unlike the upcoming Pokemon Stadium stages, the transformations here I find to be really obnoxious, like it's pretty hard to ignore them. Plus this having a good default layout just makes the gap between the hazard list and hazards version much larger. Number 91, Woohoo Island, and number 90, Skyloft. Both of these have some pretty good platform layouts in their default version. In fact, I wouldn't even be too upset if these were made legal at some point. However, with hazards, they could of course travel to different locations based on where they're from. Obviously, I prefer just having the normal platform layout. Number 89, Reset Bomb Forest. While the transformation itself is probably on the same level as the last few stages, the default layout is worse, which makes the gap between the hazard and hazardless versions a bit smaller, giving it the edge. Number 88, Paper Mario. Same exact reasoning as the last one, though I do also want to add that the boat part is cool. Never mind. Number 87, Castle Siege. While I do like the default layout a lot here, just like Skyloft and Woohoo Island from earlier, I also find all the forms the stage can transition into are all fairly fun. And finally, number 86, Mushroom Kingdom U. This also is a pretty good default layout, though not as good as Castle Siege. The extra layouts here are pretty creative and fun though. Maybe it's just my Mario bias, but I think this has the best transformations of this wave. But that's enough about transformations for now, let's go look at some more unique gimmicks. Number 85, Unova Pokemon League. This is another stage with a really good layout, thus hurting its hazard version. Like Spear Pillar, several Pokemon will be able to spawn in the back to disrupt the fight in some way. I find the effects of these ones though to be much less annoying. They pretty much just change the layout slightly, rather than slowing down the whole fight as an example. Still, this is much worse than the default version, but it's acceptable. Number 84, Midgar. This is very similar to the last stage. The layout is good, but it's just a battlefield ripoff, so not much is lost in the hazards version here. These are pretty much on the same tier as you know for Pokemon League, so the reason this gets the edge is because I dislike Battlefield more. Number 83, Mementos. Honestly, I was pretty conflicted about where to put this one. On the one hand, the default layout is pretty solid, not competitively viable because of the scary slope, but this makes for a great casual stage. With hazards on those, several walls and ceilings appear along with the train at the bottom. These walls can be very annoying when trying to get KOs, which is what brings this down. However, they really aren't that bad and can even be somewhat fun to work around. I still think this is overall a downgrade, but I could see some fun coming from this, giving it its spot on the list. Number 82, Cornaria. With hazards on, our wings will be able to fly around the main ship and attack players on it, which can get kind of annoying. Additionally, the cannons at the front can do this as well. It does help prevent camping on the cannons though, which is a big problem with the hazards off version. This is a pretty mixed bag here. Number 81, Brinstar. Being able to destroy the stage is kind of cool, and I like how it can move the stage closer to the blast zones to lead to more kills, however, I do not like the acid. It feels way too tiresome to go out of your way to avoid it, plus it can even save someone who's dead due to them not being able to recover. Had it just been destroying the stage, it would have likely been much higher. Now this next set were some of the hardest hazards to place on the list. These three stages are all terrible to play on with or without hazards. Now that should mean that my opinion on them doesn't really change much, however, I did not think it was justifiable to put these next three stages high up on a list like this. So with that said, number 80, 75M. This will make Donkey Kong move forward and cause springs in these fire guys to spawn. While they can be annoying, again, you're already playing on 75M. You clearly hate yourself. Number 79, Pac Land. There are a lot of things that change here, and I genuinely do not care to list them all. Sorry to all two Pac Land fans out there, it's at least better than 75M. And the best of the trash stages is number 78, the Great Cave Offensive. This will spawn in minecarts, and it's somewhat fun to ride them, but it's nothing notable. Number 77, Garden of Hope. Several things about this stage change with hazards on. The platforms at the 
the sides move, a pot will spawn in, the bridge can break, a stick comes out from the ground, but the main one is the peckish aristocrat. He's usually pretty easy to spot, so while it's somewhat disruptive, it's not that bad. Although he did spike me using the moving platform this one time while getting footage, so that moved him down a bit because I was pretty salty about that. Number 76, Princess Peach's Castle. This will cause a few switches to appear that will spawn in a few extra platforms. I don't have any problem with this one, it's the giant bonsai bills attempting to destroy the castle I have an issue with. The explosion is just far too massive, making them so annoying to deal with. Like the last stage though, they're pretty slow so it's not that big of a deal, but I'd still rather play on this stage without them. Number 75, Arena Ferox. During the fight, the stage will spawn in platforms. While this wouldn't normally be a big deal, I don't like how some of these platforms are solid surfaces, like walls and ceilings, as they can be a bit of trouble to deal with. Additionally, when it transitions, the whole stage is covered in a thick smoke, making it hard to see. Again, the platforms aren't terrible, but they could have been executed better. Number 74, Lilac Cruise. While this may be a legal stage, it still sucks regardless of hazards. All that happens is that the stage tilts, which isn't that bad, but still definitely a downgrade. Since the default version isn't that fun to play on anyways though, this got a decent boost. Number 73, Cloud Sea of All Rest. The hazards here is that Gramps just moves his head a little. Like the tilting on Lilat, this isn't too bad. Also, off topic, but can you Xenoblade fans stop taking W's for five seconds? Your game got pushed forward and I can't even get an announcement of an Odyssey 2. I hate each and every single one of you. Number 72, Find Me. There are a few different things that happen on this stage. For one, the cage will move with hazards, sometimes part of the stage will fall away, but the main thing is that the boss in the background will give out stat boosts sometimes and even come into the foreground. None of the hazards here are too bad, but I do find having the normal layout to be a bit more fun to me. Number 71, Flat Zone X. This is another transformation stage that changes into several different Game & Watch titles. I'd still prefer just playing on the default layout, but some of these extra ones can be a bit of fun. Plus, jumping on this trampoline is entertaining to me for some reason. I don't know, I must have the mind of a three-year-old or something. Number 70, Hyrule Castle. This stage has always been one that I've liked playing on. Sure, it's big, but I don't know, I just kind of find it fun. Anyways, with hazards on, these little tornadoes spawn. They're really easy to avoid, so they're not really that big of a deal, though they still make this version worse. Number 69, Umbra Clock Tower. Number 68, Colosseum. And number 67, Yggdrasil's Altar. All three of these stages will have extra platforms spawn around them during the fight. I'd still rather play on all of these without the hazards, but I'm not going to cry if I accidentally play on them with hazards on. Number 66, Pokemon Stadium 2. And number 65, Pokemon Stadium. Like Kalos from way earlier in the list, these will transform into four different transformations, each based on different Pokemon types. Now you may be asking, why are these so much higher? I mean, these also have competitive layouts in their default version. Well, I put these so high up because the transformations are actually really well done. None of them feel obnoxious, plus the stage will give plenty of warning for each of the transformations as the symbol of that type will appear in the back for a few seconds before the transformation. I mean, even Smash Bros. Melee used this stage in competitive play despite not having a hazard switch. Though Melee did have its own set of problems with it. While Hazards On is definitely worse than Hazards Off for both of these, it's still really not too bad to play on these stages with them on. Number 64, Picto Chat 2. The gimmick here is that special drawings will appear during the fight. None of these are too intrusive and it fits the stage pretty well. The flat layout is still better, but this one is fairly fun too. And our final hazard that technically makes the stage worse is number 63, WarioWare Inc. The default layout is really unique and had the blast zones been a bit bigger, it likely would have been legal as well. With Hazards On, the stage will occasionally force the players to do a micro game from WarioWare, and while it is a bit intrusive, Exclusive. I don't know, I think it's fun. It's a unique gimmick that fits the stage, though again, it's still worse than the Hazards Off version, so it did technically have to make this tier. But that brings us to a close for our longest tier of the video. Now it's time to jump into the gimmicks that don't really affect my opinion on a stage. Number 62, Big Blue. With Hazards On, several other cars will spawn in and at some points, will be the only place you can fight. The Hazardless version, on the other hand, only has the main big car for the entire fight. Both of these versions of the stage work. I think I slightly prefer the Hazardless version, but I could play on both. Number 61, Mushroomy Kingdom. The bricks can now be broken. Yippee! This technically makes the stage better, but it really doesn't matter. Number 60, Palutena's Temple. This kind of goes along with the trilogy of bad stages from earlier, but the reason I let this one come up is because not only do I like that you can break this bridge, but also Palutena's Guidance is only turned on with the Hazards version. If you didn't know, by pressing Pit's down taunt for one frame, he'll have a conversation with Palutena and sometimes a few other characters about his opponent. This is probably my favorite easter egg in Smash, so while it's not really great for battles, I think it's cool enough to move it up a bit. Number 59, Super Happy Tree. Hazard Zone will make the cloud platforms occasionally disappear. Honestly, this placement is more of me having an issue with the hazardless version. Personally, I don't think the clouds should appear at all here, but instead, they just make the clouds appear permanently, which is way worse since you could just camp on them forever. Since the hazards version of the stage kind of fixes this, it gets to be here on the list. Number 58, Dreamland. 
With hazards on, Wispy lightly blows wind towards the player sometimes. While there could be an argument for this just being a downgrade, I think differentiating this a bit from being a Battlefield clone is good. Plus, the wind he blows barely affects anything. Number 57, Mute City SNES. With hazards on, a few extra cards will come in from the sides and the platforms will move a bit as well. This is pretty similar to Big Blue, where you could really prefer either one. Personally, I mix on which I think is better, so I think this belongs at this spot. Number 56, Gerudo Valley. This one is definitely a mixed bag. I like being able to break the bridge in the middle, but I'm not really a fan of the Witch Sisters and their magic can be a bit much. Overall, I do think I'd still rather play with hazards on because the bridge breaking is pretty fun, but it was a fairly hard decision. Number 55, Hand and Bow. This will probably be the highest list placing Hand and Bow has ever received in its entire life. To be fair to this stage, it does give me a green screen which helps a lot in making some of my transitions, so that's nice. Anyways, with hazards, the leaves are able to tilt upon getting hit. I think both the leaves moving version and the flat leaves version are equally fun, or I guess equally unfun to play on. Oh, also, look how far Steve's minecart goes when it goes uphill. That's kinda cool, I guess. Alright, anyway, number 54, Tortimer's Island. With hazards on, Cap'n and Sharks will be found in the water. Well, I mean, Cap'n's on a boat, but you get what I mean. This really doesn't affect that much, it's fairly similar playing on the stage with and without them. Number 53, Living Room. This was always a weird one with the hazard toggle. You'd think that this would disable the falling blocks, but no, it just makes it to where the first wave of falling blocks never disappear, which is such a strange decision. This makes a hazardless version technically better for me since it lets us spend more time on the standard flat stage, though it's still not a big difference between the two. Number 52, Minecraft World. This will cause some extra destructible blocks to appear on the stage at the start of the match. This really doesn't affect anything though, since once they're destroyed, they're gone permanently. I could play on both versions of the stage just fine. Number 51, Venom. Sometimes a few R wings will fly to the side of the stage to act as platforms. They really don't change that much, but I do think I prefer having them here than not. Number 50, Dracula's Castle. With hazards on, the platforms here move a little bit. I mean, it's kinda cool, but still not much of a difference. Number 49, Yoshi's Island. This will cause a platform in the middle to tilt a bit, along with spawning a few new platforms in at the sides. I like both this and the hazards off version pretty much equally. Number 48, Town and City. This is another legal stage, however, I could see this working competitively with hazards on. The only changes here are that balloons occasionally spawn and the platforms move a little bit more. Unlike Smashville, which keeps its platform 100% stationary and hazards off, Town and City moves their platforms a bit with hazards off. Turning hazards on just makes them move a little bit more. This is probably still worse than the default version due to the balloon spawning, which can cause some hitbox extensions, but other than that, I wouldn't be upset playing on this version of the stage. With that said, I think that closes off our tier of stages that don't really change my opinion much with or without hazards. Now it's time to get to the stages I feel actually improve having hazards on. Number 47, 3D Land. This adds in a few new obstacles like donut blocks actually falling, but the main thing here are the stones and skewers during the platform portions. I think these add a little bit to each of these sections, making them worthwhile additions. Number 46, Windy Hill Zone. While I could honestly care less about the windmill moving, the springs at the edges of the stages are fun little additions. Since they're double-sided, they can even spike people, which is kind of funny. Number 45, Halberd. Now, this would have been in the previous tier had the hazard actually made sense. Instead of toggling off if the stage transforms, the stage will still move along the halberd regardless. The only thing changing is that the weapons on the ship don't attack. In the hazardless version, it just kind of feels weird without them, so I think the hazards version with the cannons on actually makes a lot more sense. Number 45, for Distant Planet. This receives a few changes. One of the main ones is this bulb orb here that will walk by and bite anyone that enters its mouth, resulting in a one-hit KO. The stage will also occasionally go through rain, causing the water to drift down the side. However, I never got it to appear for me, and I was not going to play another game using Olimar. Sorry, no footage for you all. Blame the game, not me. Number 43, New Pork City. There are a decent amount of changes like the ship actually moving in the Hazards version, along with the bottom platform being destructible, but the main one here is the Ultimate Chimera. Like the Bulwark from the last stage, this will one-hit KO anyone it bites. I think that's especially good on this stage, since New Pork City sucks, and the Ultimate Chimera makes me not need to spend so much time playing on it, so that's greatly appreciated. Number 42, Congo Falls. The stage will gain a barrel cannon with hazards on, along with a few other items coming from the waterfall. I think these changes are all good, and can even help reduce camping on the rock in the corner a bit, which is a big problem with the hazardless version of this stage. Number 41, We Fit Studio. I like the platforms being able to move in and out. Since the platforms can sometimes be pretty high up, then moving around can help prevent camping. 
Number 40, Mushroom Kingdom 2. The appearance of Birdo and Pidgeot, while definitely minor changes, make this stage a slight bit more entertaining to play on. I especially like flying around on Pidgeot's platform and charging a smash attack, hoping it leads me right to another player. Number 39, Great Bay. Based on my favorite Zelda game, there may be a bit of bias here, but I do like the appearance of Tingle and the turtle at the side moving do make the stage a bit better. Granted, it's not by much, but they're nice changes regardless. Number 38, Wrecking Crew. The whole gimmick of the stage is obviously being able to destroy it with an infinite number of floors crashing down. Without hazards, this just becomes a really boring, incredibly vertical stage, so the hazards go a long way in making this one more interesting. Number 37, Green Hill Zone. While the added checkpoints don't really add too much to the stage, I do like the destructible terrain as it turns this standard walk-off stage into one that you can actually change over time. Number 36, Luigi's Mansion. Similarly, this stage is also destructible, however, I like doing it on Luigi's Mansion more as it's a lot easier to do, and the layout actually gets significantly more fun to play on as it gets destroyed. Luigi's Mansion has a lot of ceilings, so it's somewhat annoying to fight on in its default layout, so being able to destroy it is a nice change. Number 35, Spirit Train. This will cause the camera to move a little bit more and have the back of the train change. Along with that, some extra train cars appear during the fight, just adding a little bit more to it. Neither of these obstacles are too distracting though, so I think they work well here. Number 34, Frigate Orpheon. The main gimmick of this stage is that it'll occasionally flip upside down, along with a few other smaller things like extra platforms appearing during the fight. The stage flip is pretty quick, and I never really thought it got in the way of the fight. It's a cool and unique gimmick to this stage, which is why it's up here. Number 33, Balloon Fight. Along with lightning and flippers, the infamous fish spawns here, which will drag anyone who touches the water into the blast zone if they can't mash out in time. I think this gimmick is a lot of fun, and he is surprisingly vicious as well. Since it's also a hazard that's completely predictable, it's not intrusive at all since it's obvious when and where it's going to appear. Number 32, Great Plateau Tower. This is another placement that's more of a call out towards its hazardless version. With hazards on, you're able to destroy the top of this tower, which creates a fantastic layout similar to Smashville. I would have loved to be able to fight on this, but instead of making this layout the hazardless version, they make it to where the top of the tower is present permanently, making there constantly be an obnoxious ceiling during the fight. For that reason, the Hazards version gets a lucky pass since it's the only time you'll be able to fight on this layout. Number 31, Bridge of Elven. While I do like having just a straight walk-off stage, I think King Bulbin coming by to destroy the center adds a good amount to it. It gives an opportunity to actually do some edge guarding and jumping between the two sides of the platform can be fun. The bridge is destroyed and repaired in the perfect amount of time as well, definitely a really well-balanced hazard. Number 30, Spring Stadium. I like jumping on the springs. Jeez, dude, I really do have the brain of a three-year-old. But seriously, the springs here give a really satisfying massive jump, but they even have a fairly strong hitbox. Number 29, Pirate Ship. There are quite a few changes here, like the cannon to the background launching bombs to the ship, the King of Red Lions making an appearance, and this weird catapult to the front of the ship that will absolutely murder anyone that goes on top of it. Oh, never mind, I guess. These add to the feeling of going on a ride on a pirate ship, and they're absolutely fun to play around. Number 48, Foresight. This one is relatively simple in terms of hazards. The crane at the bottom is able to move this bit of land, and a UFO is able to appear at the top of the stage. They're simple, sure, but I find them fun to work with. I especially like how the UFO has ice physics. It's a small change, but I think it makes it more unique. Number 27, Jungle Japes. This takes the one-hit KO stage hazard to the next level with a claptrap that's almost always present at the bottom of the stage. It's incredibly easy to run into it, and I personally find it to be the funniest of this brand of stage hazard. Number 26, Brinstar Deaths. With hazards on, Crane will appear in the background to spin the stage around. While this hazard could definitely be considered intrusive, also consider how terrible this layout of the stage is without hazards on. At least with hazards, it makes the stage a bit of fun. Plus, this being unique to this stage specifically certainly helps. Number 25, Mario Bros. This will spawn in several enemies, and just like the original Mario Bros, they can be defeated by hitting the POW block or jumping on the platform below them. While I would normally be against enemies on stages like this, a really cool thing about these is that they become grabbable items upon defeat. This makes defeating the enemies actually worth it, as it'll open you up to being able to use the items for combos. Or if you're bad like me, you could just throw it at your opponent, but regardless, it adds a lot of fun unique gameplay to the stage, which I really appreciate. Number 24, Duck Hunt. Okay, so in all reality, this one really shouldn't be that high. The only real gameplay changes for a standard match are that the dog occasionally appears from the grass, and for some reason, a random piece of grass appears to cover a bit of the stage sometimes. Those changes would have probably put this in mid-tier, however, one really cool thing about this stage with hazards on is that the ducks not only spawn just like in Duck Hunt, but you can also hit them down. This means that you can basically play a game of Duck Hunt inside of Smash, which is really cool. Sure, for a standard match, this isn't really that big of a deal, but I felt like 
like it deserved to be moved up at least a little bit. Number 23, Pilot Wings. This will cause the red plane to switch over to the yellow plane after a while. The transitions between the two are relatively smooth, and I do like the layouts on both of them. This is one of my favorite casual stages to play on in Smash 4, and that remains true here. Number 22, New Donk City Hall. This stage really doesn't change all that much. A few extra platforms move around, but the main thing I really like about this is purely aesthetic. See, if either Jump Up Superstar or the ground theme band performance is playing, then Pauline and the musicians will fly in on platforms during the fight, and you'll need to recruit them all in order to play the full song. This was a great way to incorporate music into the stage, and it was a really neat way to reference the musician recruitment portion of New Donk City's story in Mario Odyssey. Oh, and I may or may not be biased towards Mario Odyssey. You know... Just a hunch. Number 21, on it. Several small elements on the buildings change, like the sign falling and the tree limbs being able to move, but the main thing here are the cars. Not only do they make for good obstacles, but they also completely prevent camping at the side of the buildings due to the high amount of damage and knockback they deal. They do appear a bit more than I'd like, but they're overall an improvement. Speaking of cars, our next three all basically have the same hazard, being number 20, Port Town Aero Drive, number 19, Mario Circuit, and number 18, Figure 8 Circuit. All of these enable race cars to go along the tracks, and I think they add a lot to each of them. There's also plenty of warning before they appear, making them not only easy to dodge, but also easy to try and implement into some sort of combo. I think Figure 8 Circuit is the best of these, as the cars arriving is a lot more consistent, as sometimes there will be long stretches on the other courses without the cars appearing at all. Number 17, Mushroom Kingdom. A lot of things here are added, like these Piranha Plants and Piles, however the main things here are the warp pipes and the balancing platform in the center. The balancing platform is a unique obstacle giving a neat use for weight as they'll move differently based on the weight of the character. The warp pipes are just a lot of fun to go into, the destination you appear from is random as well, which means you might even come out of the same pipe you just entered, which is always funny. The changes here are simple overall, sure, but altogether I think they make this significantly better than the hazardless version. And our final stage before we get into the top tier, number 16, Shadow Moses Island. With hazards on, you're able to break the walls at the side, which makes playing on the stage a lot more bearable. Yeah, it's not a big change, like, at all, but not having walls tech on makes the pacing of battles much better in my opinion. But now it's time for the top tier hazards, the top 15. Number 15, Yoshi's Island. Okay, this only made it into the top tier on a technicality, since I wanted to make the top tier the top 15, but really this hazard is just about the same quality-wise as the last one. So instead of the turn blocks being completely solid like they are in the hazardless version, hazards on makes them actually rotate and become intangible upon being hit, making the stage significantly more fun to play on as you don't have to worry about any ceilings or walls getting in the way of any combos. Plus, opening up the middle is always fun as well. Number 14, Sky World. Much like the last few choices, this also has destructible terrain, however instead of just a few blocks, it's pretty much the entire stage. I find this to be really fun as depending on which platforms are destroyed or kept around, the gameplay completely changes. You may be able to live a while off of teching, but if that platform gets destroyed, then you're going to need to find a new strategy. Of the destroyed parts of the stage ones we've covered so far, this is definitely my favorite. Number 13, Congo Jungle. This one is incredibly simple, but with hazards on, the platforms in the center move and there's a barrel at the bottom. Now why would changes as simple as this make it to top tier for me? Well, it all has to do with how these platforms are placed in the hazardless version. For some reason, the developers thought it'd be a good idea to place these all the way up at the top of the stage, which just makes them incredibly annoying to use and travel up to and around. The Hazards version completely fixes that problem and also adds in a barrel cannon which is kind of fun, so that gave it a few bonus points. Number 12, Super Mario Maker. The way Hazards work on this stage is actually pretty interesting. Since Super Mario Maker's gimmick is a randomized layout each time, in order to replicate the infinite possibilities of the Mario Maker games, you may think that the Hazards wouldn't do much. The stage is still random with Hazards off, however certain elements are not able to appear which include moving platforms, bricks, ice, lava, and several more. I think this is a really good way to tackle the Hazard switch on this stage. Personally though, if I'm playing on Mario Maker, I want to make it as chaotic as possible with all of its elements, which is why I prefer having more options over the more limited selection. Oh, by the way, I guess Nintendo forgot to make these pieces of ice slippery on this layout. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of them being here, but it's kind of funny. Oh, speaking of ice, number 11, Summit. Yeah, this is honestly a really weird one to be put so high up here, but I don't know, I just find all of the changes to add a lot to this. For one, there's the fish from Balloon Fight, but now with a horrific 3D look, but I think it's the changes to the main layout I like best. There are several platforms that you can either break or move, along with some falling icicles. It's hard for me to really explain, but I just find all of this interactivity with the stage much more interesting to play with. Number 10, Norfair. Now okay, this goes completely against my intrusive rule from earlier because the lava on the stage is the definition of that, but I couldn't bring myself to put this lower. This was my favorite casual stage of Smash 4 because scrambling to get into the cage and avoid the lava falls while also trying to make sure your opponents didn't reach it were some of the most fun memories I have of that title. And I think this is a good place to say that even if I said a gimmick is intrusive, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just that I personally prefer playing on simple stages, but for how much fun the lava provided to me on this stage, 
stage, I felt that it deserved to make it into the top 10. Number 9, Boxing Ring. Comparatively, a really tame gimmick, but it also fixes a lot about this stage. One problem with the Hazardless version is that you can pretty much just camp up on the lights with zero consequences. However, with Hazards on, this platform can actually be destroyed, pretty much removing camping entirely. Yeah, it's not the most insane or wacky gimmick, but fixing a major issue like this is definitely a great thing to do. Number 8, Saffron City. Along with some platforms moving, certain Generation 1 Pokemon will be able to appear from the door at the top of the building. Since it's really obvious when and where the Pokemon are going to appear, it makes them actually fun to work with during gameplay. It's not the most in-depth gimmick, but it's still an enjoyable one regardless. Number 7, Golden Plains. Since this comes from New Super Mario Bros. 2, this stage's gimmick is all about collecting coins. After collecting 100 coins, the player will become golden for a short time, causing their attacks to be much stronger. This is a really well-developed hazard, as it essentially makes this stage have an extra layer behind it, as you not only have to beat your opponents, but also collect more coins than them. The buff is also really well-balanced. While it's definitely strong and worth going for, if your opponent gets the buff, you can still fight back against them. Overall, this is a really well-developed gimmick that I don't mind playing with from time to time. Number 6, Peach's Castle. The platforms at the bottom will move back and forth, which will prevent camping and also save poor Bowser from this. The main thing I like about this, though, is the moving bumper at the top. It's really fun to try and work this into combos, and it's always funny when it saves you from certain death. The changes here are simple, sure, but I appreciate them a lot. Number 5, Gamer. While the hazardless version of this stage provides for a relatively decent stage to fight on, adding in 5 volt to the background definitely makes this one of the most fun stages to play on. Getting spotted by her will deal a ton of damage along with some pretty strong knockback. It's always super intense whenever she appears on screen, but there's also enough time to get to a safe place. It's also fun to try and sabotage other players by trying to force them into her line of sight. This is easily one of the best casual stages in Smash history. But now for this top 4. Not only are the hazards phenomenal on each of these stages, not only do I think they're better than their hazardless versions, but these 4 are all stages I want to see in competitive play with hazards. So kicking these 4 off, we have number 4, Yoshi's Story. During the fight, a cloud that the community has dubbed Randall will cycle through the stage on a set path. This guy can be stood on, and I think he's an excellent change. I've always felt that despite some minor adjustments, this stage is still way too similar to Battlefield for me. Adding in Randall would be a great way to make this stage more unique. The way he can save players from certain death, or maybe even help assist in some kills, makes his gimmick unique. This stage is played with hazards on in melee, so there's really no reason this can't be an ultimate aside from it being easier to play with all stages hazards off. Number 3, Smashville. This will cause a platform in the middle that's normally stationary to actually move around during the fight. This could lead to some interesting and unique combos based on where the platform is, and since we have another stage with a platform in the middle, I'd much rather play on this version. Sadly though, balloons spawn during the fight and those can cause some hitbox extensions, but again, if Smash 4 could deal with it, I don't think that's too much of an issue. But then again, Smash 4 did play with Lilat tilting, so maybe I shouldn't look to that game for guidance. Number 2, Fountain of Dreams. This is our final non-legal stage of the video, and it always breaks my heart to say that. The reason it's banned is because not only is the hazardous version too similar to Battlefield, but the stage can lag under very, very specific conditions like Wario spamming his bike or something. If the lag wasn't an issue though, I would have really liked to see this stage be played since I think it's one of the nicest looking stages in the series. Additionally, the hazard here is really cool. During the fight, the side platform will change elevation, either rising or sinking down into the fountain. I love this gimmick as it not only makes it much more unique from Battlefield, but it'd also be really fun to try and land combos with these platforms that are only possible due to the specific height they're at at that time. I really hope the next Smash game fixes the lag issues here because I would absolutely love to play on this stage more often. But anyways, the big number one choice, the stage that inspired me to make this video, is also the most frustrating hazard in the entire game. Number one, of course, goes to Hollow Bastion. The so-called hazard on this stage is simply the aesthetic changing on the last stock to the really incredibly looking dive to the heart transformation. This has absolutely zero effect on gameplay, so why this is considered a hazard will always, always be a mystery to me. In no way is this distracting, but when you turn hazards off, this portion of the stage is nowhere to be seen. We were absolutely robbed out of being able to see this section of the stage in tournaments. The reason that this is number one on the list is because I think it's the only hazard in the entire game that is just a 100% improvement over the hazardless version. Even if you think this hazard is a lame choice for number one, you have to at least agree that you'd rather play with this on rather than off. I mean, for my other choices in top tier, there are legitimate reasons to still like the hazardless version, but this one right here is the one stage I think everyone can agree is better with hazards on. And if you disagree, we simply don't value your opinion. But seriously, Nintendo, if Sora and Hollow Bastion come back for the next Smash game, please make the dive to the heart sequence not considered a hazard.
But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you all like being able to push a fire hydrant in Packland and are mad at me for how low I put it? Let me know in the comments. I'm sorry for this video taking a while to make. I've been a bit busy as of late, but I'm going to be trying to push out videos at a faster rate to get us to 100k here soon. It's still absolutely insane to me how close we are to hitting it. I genuinely can't thank you all enough. But that's enough rambling for now. Dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.